this we're gonna go ahead and start. It's the uh, get it back into God's word and all, Amen. chapter by chapter and verse by verse. Uh, we're gonna study a new book today, you know. Praise God, we barely finished Second Corinthians, first and second Corinthians. Now we're gonna get into Galatians, you know, praise God. Galatians, of course, is one of my favorite epistles and among those in the And let's get back, let's get into it, and I praise God. So it says right there in verse one, let's pray. Father, we give you all glory and honor. You give us, we give you thanks for the word we're about to receive in the name of Jesus. Open our eyes, open our ears, open our hearts. Thank you, Father. Amen. Okay. He said, Paul, an apostle, it says, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. So it's not by man. He didn't go to a seminar. He didn't get a, a like we call ordained. You know, it was, you know, God called him, chosen him before even before the foundation of the world. You know, any uh, the credentials was the word of God. You know, like it says there in Galatians 1 and verse 10. It says, For do I not persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? If I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For neither I received it of man, neither was I taught it, yes? but by revelation of Jesus Christ. So he didn't have to go to a seminar or school to learn this, even though he was well educated in God's word. But it says, like it says here in John chapter 15 and verse uh, 16 says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go bring forth fruit and that you and that your fruit, but I do say, should remain, but I, and whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. So who chose us and who ordained us? Some uh, college, some, uh, uh, some biblical institute? No, God ordained us. And look at verse 18. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. So it's not by man. He wasn't taught by man, it was by Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says there in 1 John 2, 27, if the unction or the Holy Spirit remains in us, we need that, that no man teach us, for the same Holy Spirit teaches us all things. Even Jesus says here in John 15, and, and I think it's verse 15, that he says, Henceforth I call you no more servants, for the servant knoweth not what the Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that have I heard of my Father, I have made them known to you. So God is the one that teaches us, man. It's not man. You know, uh, verse by verse, chapter by chapter. Okay, so it says, Who raised him from the dead, who... Who raised Jesus from the dead? God the Father raised him from the dead. You know? And if he, had, if he raised him from the, from the dead, he has power to raise us up. And I'm not saying that Jesus Christ is not God, because he has the power to even raise himself up. And I praise God, because he's God. But meaning God the Father raised him up from the dead. Okay, verse 2. And all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia, Addressed to Galatia, but at most, uh, you know, God's word is all God's word is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, that the man of God may be thoroughly first. It's a good work. It's for us all. Okay? Grace be to you, verse 3 says, Grace be to you and peace from God the Father. So, where does that grace and peace come from? From God. That peace that surpasses all understanding, that grace that He has given each and one of us, each, all, uh, each and every one of us, without praise God. And from our Lord Jesus Christ, so it comes from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave Himself for our sin. Who gave Himself for our sin? Jesus Christ gave Himself for our sin. You know, 
He, the Bible says there, I think in John, uh, what is it, John 10, 18 says, No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. See, of his own will. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. See, he's God. Because he had the power to, to uh, resurrect. It says, This commandment have I received of my Father. You know, his Father, Yahweh. It says, Who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world. And the world, the word world there in the Greek is ion, ion, which means world age. You know? According to the will of God and our Father. I want to say a little bit more about him giving himself for us. It is written there, I think it's in the book of James, in chapter 1 and verse 18 says, Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth. See, of his own will, he gave himself for us. As it's written there in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20, it says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live, I live in the flesh, by faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. You know, the Bible says there in the book of Romans, I think it's chapter 4, the last, cha the last verse of Romans chapter 4, he said, He was delivered for our transgression and was raised again for our justification. Right? So He gave Himself for us. Wow. That He might deliver us from this evil world age. Present evil world age. According to the will of God and our Father. And it is God's will to deliver us. And as it is read there, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9, that He has already delivered us. It says in verse 5, To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Now let's go to verse 6. It says, I marvel. <laughs> Praise God. You know, I marvel. It says, I wonder. You know, I'm in, I'm in amazement. I'm, I'm in wonder. It said, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ and to another gospel. You know, and I looked up that word uh, removed. Well, Senor, you know. And it is the word uh, meta amy, which is to transport to be transported. Uh, also means to transfer, that is to say literally, transport, like totally move. To be transported, exchange, like you exchange the, the word for a lie, the truth for a lie. And it says, uh, change sides. You change sides. You want the good side, <laughs> you move to the bad side. And then figuratively speaking, it means pervert. So you perverted the gospel of Christ in a deeper meaning, figuratively. It says, I marvel that you are so soon transported and you change the truth, you exchange the truth for a lie. Not only that, you perverted it. That's what that word means in the Greek. It says, from him that called you into the grace of Christ and to another gospel. And it used to be the truth you were believing in. It used to be God's word you were believing in. But you started listening to man. You started listening to traditions of man that make void the word of God. And you move sides, you change sides, which is what that, that word means in the Greek. And what it means to change sides. Praise God. From the word to traditions of men. And it says, which is not another. You know, it's not another, it's the same word, but perverted. It's the same word, but adulterated. And it's written there in 2 Corinthians, when we're studying chapter 4, it says there in uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 2, but we but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking, not walking in craftiness, nor handling, meaning uh, disgracing or shame, shaming the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. 
In other words, not perverting God's word, not corrupting it. You know, it said, which is not another, but there be some of you that trouble that trouble you, that would pervert the gospel of Christ. You know, what's the word pervert? Well, in Mongo Senora, uh, well, we can look it up right quick, and I first got a it's the uh, 3344 in the Strong's. Let's see. Well, I'll get it real quick. They're not 33 and 44 in the Strong's. And it means, here we go. Well, it comes from the same, the same word that we just studied. It's, it, it's a, to turn across, to transmute, or corrupt. And what was in your corrupted God's word. Exchanged it, in other words. You know? It says, verse 8, But though we, look, look, listen very careful to this verse. This is probably the most important verse here in Galatians chapter 1. It says, But though we, we, but though we, or an angel from, from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. What? We? Uh, you think the post of Paul is going to come and preach another gospel? Do you think an angel that from God will preach another gospel? What kind of an angel would preach another gospel? A fallen angel. But notice how it says, but we, in other words, a fallen angel saying that he's Paul. Because Paul would never preach another gospel. So when he says we, he means a, 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 an angel, a false angel, imitating Paul, imitating the apostles of Christ. If Jesus, if Jesus comes saying he's Christ, guess what his disciples, or I mean, guess what his angels are going to come saying? If Jesus says he's Christ, what, what is his angels going to be saying? Well, the disciples, the apostles, I am Paul. You know, praise God. Preaching another gospel. That's why it says, if we or another angel from heaven, you see? Meaning that those angels are going to come, they're going to say, oh, I'm an angel from heaven. But he starts preaching another gospel. What kind of angel is it? It's a fallen angel. For marvel not, for saving himself, is transformed into or disguised as an angel of light. You know? Praise God. They're going to disguise themselves. If Satan disguised himself as an angel of light or saying he's Jesus the light, what do you think his disciples, I mean his angels are going to be saying? You know? That's why it's written there in Revelation chapter 9 verse 20 that they will not repent of worshiping these idols of gold and silver because they're going to be de facto here, all those gods, so-called angels in heaven as it is right there in 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and 5. They call themselves gods. They will be here with Satan. And they will be worshipped. They're going to be saying, I'm, I'm your loved one. I'm the Apostle Paul. I'm the Apostle John. Uh, you know, they're going to be saying they're angels from heaven. But it's a false doctrine they're preaching. Because Satan comes first with his angels. It can't be clearer than that. Sir. But though we are an angel from heaven... What kind of an angel will preach another gospel? A fallen angel. Notice that from heaven. Because they haven't been kicked out yet. It says, praise God. That's why it's written there in Daniel 8.10 8, 8, that, that Satan himself will cast down the stars from heaven. Himself, he's going to bring them with him. Verse, and it says, be, there's a preaching of the gospel unto you that that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Praise God. And verse 9 said, as we said before, see Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10 tells us that there's, there's evil in, in heavenly places. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, you know, against rulers of darkness of this world. You know, praise God. And against wicked, against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Right? Verse 9 says, As we said before, so I now say again. Right? If any, and notice how, in the King James, 
You know, the word man is in italics. The King James is telling us that the word man was added there. So if it's added there, it shouldn't be read. So it says, if any, meaning man or angel, the word any means man or angel, because notice how it says man in italics. Preach any other gospel to you than you have received, let him be accursed. And I'm not them up. Okay, praise God. Like that angel in John chapter 5. <laughs> praise God. Uh, he, he was supposedly from heaven. And uh, he was stirring up the dead water. And uh, whoever would go into that water while the water would be stirred up, they would be healed. But at the same time, we have Jesus, the healer, the one that God sent to this world to heal. And as it is read there in Psalms, it says, For I sent them my word and healed them. That's Jesus. Jesus is the healer. And what was this angel doing healing if Jesus was there? Was this angel greater than Jesus? No. This angel wanted to be in place of Jesus. Instead of Jesus. As the Antichrist. You know, he was stirring up this, the, uh, all this water and people would go in there. But while, wow, you know, it was stinky water, full of bacteria, it was dead water, and Jesus was there. And you know how Jesus didn't heal all of them, except for only one of them? Because, and my many are the called, but few are the chosen. And my God said, and he went to him, and he told them, hey, what's wrong? He goes, well, I, I don't have any man to put me in the water. He goes, what man? You don't need a man, you just need me. And did Jesus take him to that ugly water? No, he healed him there. Jesus had no part with that angel. Had no part with that dead water. Because that angel was a fallen angel. And sadly, sadly, in my course, many to this day, many pastors to this day, preach that it was a good angel. Just because he was from heaven. Well, don't you read that, that among us, you know, not all angels from heaven are good? Some of them are bad. What are they doing out there? They have, and, and they're already kicked out because they haven't been kicked out. That's why they're up there. Duh. Okay. Praise God. Let's go. Let's move on. Verse 10 says, For do I now persuade men, in other words, try to convince them, hermano Señor, to try to win them? Do I try to win men, like buying them off, like trying to please them? Like, a, you know, a smooth talking, like uh, many preachers, like, uh, like those, those uh, real nice uh, prosperity messages. For do I not persuade man or God? Who do I want to win? Do I want to win men or do I want to win God? Am I looking for glory of men or am I looking for glory of God? Who do I want to please? Who do I want to work for? Says, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. You know, man, there's many men pleasers preaching what people want to hear. For in the end times, the Bible says there that they would pay preachers, teachers, to have engineers. In other words, to pay them so that they can scratch the itch that they have in the ear. In other words, so they can preach what they want to hear. And they would give them a salary. And yet, we are living in that generation. Where others, preachers getting paid to preach what people want to hear. Praise God. It says, For what do I seek please men, or if I yet please men? If, if I yet please men. You know, the glory of man. Is one of Satan's uh, devices, one of Satan's methods, and we are supposed to know the depths of Satan. And one of those devices, one of those methods, is the glory of man. People always seek that pleasing man or the glory of man. How do I know? 
Because Jesus, because Jesus Himself, when Satan came to Him, what did what did Satan offer Him? He offered, "Oh, you bow down to me, and I'll give you the kingdoms of the world." Well, kingdom, it wasn't Jesus already the King of the of the universe. Wasn't Jesus already the Lord of Lords and King of Kings? So Satan offers something that with God we already have. In other words, if we confess Christ before all men, that one day Christ will, will, will confess us before everybody, before the angels and before His Father. What more fame do you want more than that? Without praise God. He said, for do I not persuade men or do I seek to please men? I think there's a scripture over here, I think in 2 Thessalonians, um, uh, I think it's, well, 1 Thessalonians, verse 4, chapter 2, verse 4 says, But as we as are allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak not as pleasing men, but God which trieth our hearts. For neither at any time use we flattering words, as you know, nor cloak of covetousness. God is with, in other words, an excuse to get money from you. Okay? It says right there in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 5 says, For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves for your servants Jesus' sake. As it is written there in John chapter 7 and verse 19, He that seeketh his, glo seeketh his own glory, he said, He that speaketh of himself, seeketh his own glory. But he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true, and all righteousness is in him. But I praise God. And the Pharisees, well, they love the praise of man rather than the, play, the, the praise of God. But I praise God. It says right there in verse 12, 42 of John, Nevertheless, among the chief rulers, also many believed on Jesus. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him lest they should be put out of their church, their synagogues. For they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. You see, I'll prove it to you. That is one of Satan's devices. Look at what, Matthew chapter 16. Matthew 16, I'm going to go to Matthew, this is saying. Matthew 16. Uh, let, me get, let, let, me, let me read it to you. Praise God. Matthew 16 and verse 23. But... Jesus turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou art in offense unto me. For thou savest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of man. See, the glory of man, the pleasing of man, is one of Satan's techniques, devices, methods of operation. Go, Señor. And right now, a lot of people like those likes on their on their videos, right? on uh, on their on their Facebook or or whatever Instagram or Twitter or whatever, right? You see how uh, Satan and my Senora, you know, <laughs> a lot of people you like that glory, you know, they like they like that recognition. And if they don't get it, well, they get mad. Oh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna be your friend no more. Whatever, right? Verse eleven. But I started fighting. Verse it says. For do I, verse 10 says, For do I not persuade men or God, or do I seek to please man? For if I yet please men, I shall not be the servant of Christ. Verse 11. But I certify you, meaning I guarantee you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached to me is not after man. I didn't go to a Bible institute to learn this. Praise God. I didn't go to a seminar to, to, to learn this. You know, praise God. Nebuchadnezzar was a man that believed in the God of education. But Nebuchadnezzar also symbolized the prince of the prince uh, the, is also foreshadowed the Antichrist, which was Satan, which is Satan, the king of confusion. And what was you know, that's why a lot of people believe the same thing. Because a lot of these pastors go to the to these seminaries, and they get brainwashed. Praise God. And uh, they start teaching the rapture because that's what they were taught in Bible Institute. And they had to use the same Bible, more than likely the Schofield Bible, or, or some other publication from, from the Moody publication, 
which teach the rapture. Most of these Bible institutes, they teach the, the, the rapture. Praise God. You don't believe me? Just go visit a, a college that's near here, right? Praise God. That, that's supposed to be Christian college, right? And see what they teach. It says, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached to me is not after man. Verse 12. For I neither received it of man. For neither was I taught it by revelation of Jesus Christ. You see? Praise God. And if that, this is our, this is our best credential. This is our degree right here. Praise God. From Him, we're, we're taught from Him. As it is written there in, uh, praise God, uh, in Ephesians, uh, if we are, if we are taught, if we have been taught by Him, but not praise God, as the truth is in Christ. Let's go to Galatians chapter 1 and verse 13. It says, For you have heard of my conversation, in other words, my duty, my conduct, my conduct, the way, well, the way of living that I used to have in time past in the Jews' religion. See, he was in the Jews' religion. But remember there, Philippians chapter 3, I count all that as dumb. You know, I was a Pharisee, the Pharisees, the best of the best. But I count all that as dumb for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ. Do I count all this by dumb? But I'm praise God. I count it as lost to win Christ. Praise God. All that religion, it was false. I gave it up. It was the Jews' religion. How that be in measure, I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. You see, I was on the other side. <laughs> and providing the Jews' religion above many of my equals in my own nation, being more exceedingly jealous of the traditions of my father. That's sad. There's people that are more, more jealous, more passionate about doctors of men. Then God's word. Praise God. Nobody you talk to, you, you tell them about the rapture, nobody. They're like, well, it's so <laughs> real passionate about, <laughs> praise God. You know, but more passionate for traditions of men than the traditions of God. It says, verse 15, But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb, and called me by His grace, that is written there in Jeremiah 1, 5, that God, that God knew Jeremiah even before he was in his mom's womb, before the foundation of the world. You know, God called him. G Peter, I mean, Paul wasn't seeking Jesus. Jesus came to Paul. Why? Because Jesus knew who he was. How did he know him? Because in the first world days, during Satan, Satan's capital, or Satan's overthrow, or rebellion, and while Paul was one, one third that did not worship Satan and that followed Christ. Amen. Praise God. It says, to reveal his son in me. It says, to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen. Immediately I confer not with flesh and blood. Verse 17, neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me. But I went to Arabia and returned again to Damascus. You know, I have one good teacher, and that's Jesus. That's God. It's in verse 18. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. And the word 15 in the spiritual numerics means rest. Okay? 15 in spiritual numerics means rest. So he was there with Peter 15 days, resting with him 15 days. Verse 19. But others of the apostles I had none save for James, the Lord's brother, the Lord's half-brother. James, the one we read about in the book of James. Okay? Praise God. So he knew all of them. <laughs> Praise God. Verse 20. Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God I lie not. Verse 21. Afterwards, I came into the regions of Syria. Remember, that's where he was when Jesus came to him. He was entering Damascus. You know? Praise God. And a big old light shined on him. Praise God. And blinded him for, for three days. Praise God. 
And God talked to him right there in the book of Acts, chapter 9. Remember what he told him. It, it, uh, well, remember what God told him there in Acts chapter what? Chapter 9. He tells him. Let me read it right quick to you. It says, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, Yeshua, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for to, to thee to kick against the pricks. And he trembling and started and said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told to thee what thou must do. And I praise God. And and God, and God revealed himself to him in a mighty and in a mighty way. And told him. Is there in, in the book of Acts, chapter 26, and verse 15. And I he said, I am the, the, the one that thou persecutest. Verse 16 said, But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both to these things with those seen and of the things in which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, and to whom I have sent thee. It says, to open the eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Praise God. To transform them, to transport them from the kingdom of of Satan or the power of Satan to the kingdom of his dear son. You know, praise God. As it is rendered in the book of Colossians chapter 1 and verse 12 through 14. Okay, my Lord, you know, they say, uh, verse what, seven, verse, uh, verse 21. Afterwards I came to the regions of Syria. You know, Syria was, as you see, a Christian nation way before it was a Muslim nation. And to this day, many Syrians worship Christ in Syria. Many Christians. That's why there is all this conflict, all this struggle over there in Syria right now. Because ISIS and all their affiliates want, want to kill all the Christians. And uh, Bashar al-Assad, the dictator, well, he supplies refuge for these Christians. Many Christians fight for, for the Syrian army, believe it or not. That really is where Christ, where the Christians were first called Christians in Antioch, that is Syria. Okay, verse 22. It was a known by faith unto the churches of Judea which were in Christ. Verse 23. But they had heard only. That he which persecutes us in time past now preaches the faith which once he destroyed. <laughs> and they glorify God in me. They're like, what? This man he used to be persecuted, now he's a Christian? Wow. Only God can transform people. And my Lord only God can change people. And if God could change Paul. And God can change anybody, transform, transform them, praise God, to, into a totally different person. You know? Praise God. Stay, uh, okay, we're going to stop there. You know? We finished Galatians chapter 1. Uh, anybody have any questions or comments?